Good afternoon everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday afternoon. My name's Claire Manning from Thirsty Brush and I'm going to do another stamping and card making video for you today with a bit of heat embossing uh, and a little bit of colouring in there as well. So I hope you're all keeping safe and uh, well and warm. It's been freezing all week. I don't know if any of you have still got snow. We had a little bit here in Birmingham. So I'm just getting ready to do some stamping and just giving my, my Eureka needs a good scrub. But let's just give it a little wipe for now. Anyway. So today I'm going to um, use, let me show you which stamp and die sets I'm going to use. I've got this Vintage Carnation one, which is one of our earlier stamp sets, and the coordinating die that goes around the edge of the flowers and some of the sentiments. I may use a sentiment from here with this lovely scripty font, or I may use something else, I'm not sure yet. But to create a background, I'm going to use these wood frame stamps as well. Now, these came in embossing die form obligatory dog hair there or you could have the stamps or I know lots of you bought them both together but I thought we'll use the stamps to get it today and we're going to stamp onto the background and try and create quite a cool effect with using both of these. I tend to use one or the other to frame my flowers but let's have a look see if we can do something a bit different. So I've got a piece of card here already cuts a little bit smaller than my five by seven, so it can be mounted straight on. And I'm gonna heat and gas using these. So there's a square one and there's a rectangular one. Now what I fancied doing was creating kind of like a triptych effect by having God, this is a new packet, these are quite stuck. There we go. By having them kind of come off the side of the page and using the three, so there's two stamps, so I might use two of the square and one of the rectangle or vice versa. Let's see how they fit. So I only really need a kind of corner bit of them. So just thinking about how I do one, two, kind of three. Let's see if we can fit this one over here. Okay, I think that'll work. And then I'll need to stamp the third one separately, I think. If you think about uh, triptychs are normally pieces of artwork that are made in three. So if you have, say, on a wall of your living room or something like that, and you've got a, uh, a piece of art that's split into three, but they're kind of the images all go together either in a row or you know they have um a similar theme something like that uh, that's what triptych means so or it just means like a group of three really so these aren't going to be as such containing artworks but it's going to give a background to our artwork which in this case is going to be the lovely carnation so i'm going to try not to put any of the embossing sticky ink where I don't need it because it's just going to get wasted. So these are lovely sketchy wood designs. I did actually hand draw these wood designs myself a long, long time ago. It took me ages, but I love them. So we're going to heat emboss in gold to make that uh, wood grain really stand out and then I'm going to add a bit of watercolour. So I'm done with the rectangle one. Now, if I'm careful, I can just about see where I've stamped there. You probably can't on camera. But then if I'm careful and I do, I think I'm going to have the grain all going in one direction as in it's going up and down only because I think it might 
it might be a little bit funny to the eye if it's um, some are going across and some are going down. That makes sense. Did I do that on the right one? No. <laughs> Going to do the right corner. You have to think of it like backwards, don't you? So just make sure there's enough on there. Okay, and then let's pop on a gold powder. Just a bit of scrap. Grab a piece of my printer to catch it. When I've got a big piece like this, I tend to do it. Go a little bit. Always make sure I've got a piece that I can hold on to. So it's quite fine and quite sketchy, this design. But it's just going to give us like a subtle good design in the background. It's just a little bit there, it's picked up on a fingerprint as I've moved the stamps around. So I'm just going to brush that off. <sighs> so there's our three. Let's heat set them and get them all shiny. A lovely subtly delicate pattern so obviously if you wanted to just do say the rectangle or the square one in the middle and have your flower sat on there but I thought this might be something a little bit different you could do this if you've got circle wreaths or anything like that in your stash stamp wise anything where you can create kind of a one two three and coming off the page so to add a little bit of colour to this and make those frames really pop out, grabbed a couple of inks from my stash. Now these are the oxide ones that you can use distress inks or anything um, that you can mix with water just to create a kind of watercolour effect or in, indeed watercolour paints. Uh, I just look quite like the chalkiness of these. So I'm going to use my Eureka as a little bit of a palette there. Let's see if I can squeeze this on. And I've got a couple of browns and a grey. That's like a creamy brown. And that one might be a little bit orangey. I'm thinking this and the grey should be really cool. So nice wet, decent sized brush. And I'm just going to go in and 
very loosely go. I'm not painting the actual frame. You can see I'm not sticking into lines or anything like that. I'm just putting colour down around where they are. You can add more water to your brush and blend it out if you don't want those harsher lines. And then let's add some mix and add a bit more colour of some of the others. Let's have this one completely coming out from the corner maybe. Just wants to look like kind of splashes and just loose. Lots of water on your brush. I'm not using watercolour card here, I'm just using normal cardstock, but you use whatever you've got lying around. And then for this last bit, I'm going to do some splatters. Now, some of this is still wet, so they're going to kind of bleed out, but that's exactly what I want. Some of them to be on the dry paper. And some of them on the wet. Let's to add even a bit more texture. That's what I've got left here. Let's see if we can get some extra by dipping on again. Oh, this is really going to layer it. Might be a bit too wet in places, but we can always dry and dab off. Okay, I think that looks good. It's quite kind of rusticy and vintagey, which goes perfectly with the style of flower and vintage carnation. So I'm just going to dry that off. So you've got those lovely tones of the kind of browns and greys and things like that. And then when you hold it against the light, you get the, um, because the gold is, I hope you can see that on there, but because uh, the gold is, uh, resists the water, you can still get it gleamed through. So they look like a bunch of old frames now, don't they? So I'm just going to pop that aside now while we work on the flower. So back to my Eureka, I'll just wipe off that excess. Do another one, put another background or something if you've got some left on an extra time. So I've got another piece of white card and I'm gonna stamp on So for this, I'm going to do, I'm going to stamp it in grey because they're very kind of pencil sketchy, these vintage flower images. So I want it to kind of retain that a little bit. 
So this is going to be fairly light. And then I think I might use some pencils for a change. So we've got watercolour in the background. Again, it's just like mixing your mediums without it feeling like too much mixed media. And, you know, playing around with, just because you do a bit of watercolour or a bit of alcohol inks or a bit of this or a bit of that, doesn't mean your entire project needs to remain that. So I've got my Faber-Castell pencils here, um, which are my absolute favourite, but please use whatever you've got. Uh, so hopefully I can build up a quick bit of colour for you. Just thinking about what colours. I'm going to need some greens. And I'm going to keep them quite muted to keep with that um, vintage feel. So that's kind of emerald. Some of these are a bit bright, really. I might add a little bit that one in, but we can blend them. And then thinking kind of like a pinky peachy. Maybe even blend in some cream there. Let's have, let's have a play and see. So we've got three of each. So I tend to build up with my lighter colours first. So let's have a go at the leaves and the stem. And I'm just going very lightly. Doing an all over colour. I'm no expert with these pencils. I only started using them recently, but I'm having real fun. So these are, like I said, Faber-Castell Polychromos, um, which aren't the cheapest in the world, but there's tons of other types of, uh, I think they're oil rather than wax. So they blend really well and you can go from these really, really pale soft colours to, um, oh, I'm going to die cut some of this out. So with the same pencil and you can get, you know, really different kind of shading. But what I learned was don't go in with how you want it to look straight away, build it up. If you've got other kind of oil pencils, I know uh, some of you have got the Hemi ones, haven't you? Let me know how you get on with those and um, maybe share with us some of the things you've made using those pencils, I'd love to see. So like I say, I'm a bit of a newbie. I'm just putting a very light wash of colour. Not worrying too much about the lines because they're very sketchy and loose anyway. Okay, so let's keep with this one and let's build a little bit of shadow. So there's a few bits I'm going to go. I've got lines here where you can see the leaves curl. And I'm going to add a little bit more colour. Pressing slightly harder. I'm just going over a little bit more. And down the one side of the stem, really need to sharpen these. Sharper the better for these. But I've started recording now, so we'll go with it. <laughs> already just with one colour and see we're starting to build a little bit of definition and light and shade 
So I'm keeping the darker all on this left hand side. So that will make them look even more realistic. We're not going for true realism here, but it's nice to, you know, practice your light and shade skills. And I want this to look like one of those 1800s botanical sketches or something that they used to do before photography. So obviously, as you look out into your garden and things like that, leaves are very rarely one shade. So I'm going to mix in some of the other greens. And just this is like a light wash of it to layer over and you can still see the light and shade from the other ones uh, from the other green sorry you're not losing that it's building on it that's what's great about these kind of all base pencils in comparison to your wax ones you get much more buildability Okay, so like we did before, we did a light wash of colour, didn't we? And then I'm going to go in with some slightly darker bits. And think about where you would expect the greenest, darkest bits of a leaf or a stem to be. And they tend to be at the base. Depending on your light, but again, we're not going for total realism here. I just want the depth rather than... Um, total realism. Just pick up on some of those little corners as well. I'm going to go over again with another layer of the lighter, more muted green. And this is going to blend and just make that brighter green a little bit more realistic. It's a little bit blue looking for my liking. This is just another light wash over, but it just brings everything together. Go a little bit harder where you want to blend it even more. I 
do find the pencil work does take longer. Um, and it does, I get a bit of a problem with my hands and it does, I often feel myself starting to get a little crampy now. Um, so if you need to take breaks and let your hand recover a little bit, then by all means do so. I'll try and keep going as long as I can. <laughs> Okay, starting to look a little bit more. Not quite finished, but getting there. Plenty of depth. Now let's go in with a brown. So this is where you can create, let's, let's have a darker one. Extra green just in case. So with these kind of browns, maybe even a grey, if you want to use it, this is where you can create real shadow. And real depth. I guess the key here is to not do too much. alternating between light areas and then don't making it a little bit more darker where I think the real shadow would be. Okay, I think I'm there with the leaves. I could play all day with that lot. <laughs> but let's get on to the flower. So like I say, I want this to kind of be a peachy looking flower rather than super bright pink. So I know I do have a bright pink there, but I'm going to try and mute it a little bit by all over putting this. What colour is this? Oh, it's just called cream. So I was going to say it's like a creamy So like I did with the leaves, a light wash all over. Think of when you're building up your watercolours as well and you go, if you're doing more realistic watercolours, you do your first wash. Normally light and then you go in and build up light to dark. So I'm going quite fast here and being a bit scribbly, I would be um, much more careful ordinarily. <laughs> so let's do a light wash, very, very light of this pink now. One thing I am being careful of is I want my pencil strokes to be in the direction that the flower is coming from the stem. It's just going to make it look a little bit more realistic. And this is really, really light here. And then we're going to start adding some shade and depth like we did. 
with the leaves. So hopefully that looks a slightly peachier pink base now than just this. That's what it would be if I was just colouring with that. So can you see where the kind of petals overlap here? So let's go into the base of them. Very similar to how I do with watercolours or pens and just add a little bit more. You can do it in kind of flicks to make it. Um, bleed out if you like. This bit I think would be quite dark under here because it's almost like the centre of the flower and the back of that leaf and um, petal. And then as each one overlaps, you're going to get a little bit of shadow. But again, I would say go slightly lighter because you can always add more, but it's difficult to kind of remove that darkness. The only re way you can really do it is make everything else darker again, which sometimes then you feel like you've ruin the kind of soft vintagey look. So I'm just going around petal by petal. Just take time, but it's a really lovely way to spend your time, if I'm honest. I think of far worse things to do on a Sunday afternoon than a, a nice bit of colouring. This is like adult colouring books on steroids, isn't it? In fact, did any of you, one of the things I liked before and still enjoy sometimes before card making was those adult colouring books and there's so many beautiful ones out there now. Um, but then I just wanted to be a bit more creative and, you know, create my own scenes, create my own designs and that's where I found card making really allowed me to do that. Okay, so you can start to see some of the texture come now. Still got some of the kind of pale, creamy, peachy. And then you've got some areas of darker and you can start to see where the individual petals come out. So I'm going over with a light. I say wash, I'm not quite going to the ends of the petals with this orangey colour. It's going to tone down some of the pink and then we'll go back in with the pink for the final bit. I'm alternating between some quite light strokes. And then sometimes in those little corners where the petals overlap, 
Right here, I can make that a little bit bolder. And I love carnations, but they have a bit of a bad rep, don't they? I think they're beautiful. Let's go in with the pink again and I'm going to try a light wash all over and see how that affects the colour and see where we might need to add a tiny bit of shade. Okay, so I'm liking the kind of peaky, peachy pinkiness of it now. But I still think it needs some depth for shadow. And I don't think I'm going to get that with these pinks and oranges. So I'm going to grab a grey. Now I will just add a tiny bit more deep pink. In some areas. But then I'm going to go add a grey and really go and try and separate those petals even more. Just get some of them looking a bit pinker. Okay. Okay, so I've got a warm grey here. And I'm just going right into those bits that I think would be super, super dark. Starting off very light. I'm just thinking about where it would be darkest in between just to make them pop a little bit more. Then you still get the kind of hue, the colour show through, but it's, it's changed the tone to more muted where the shadows are. Some of it I'm not quite happy with there, but again, I could spend 
absolutely hours going over this until it looked absolutely perfect but <laughs> you would be here for a long long time just giving a last little bit of pink where I think it needs it but I think you get the idea of where we're going with building in light layers and then going in with shadows and don't be afraid of mixing the colors with this type of pencil it doesn't have to be just your flat color anyway shall we die cut it out and layer it on so for a bit of die cutting i'm going to use just the main from here This is going to give us a usual one mil border. I've put my little low tack tape and then I'm going to die cut a sentiment as well. to hold this in place. And good tip here, if you can see, if you pick some leaves that are say, um, in a diagonal, if you can see the tip of both leaves here, it should be in the right place. But I don't stress too much if it's not 100% perfect. And then I've got some holographic here for this happy sentiment that I'll run through in a moment as well. So here's our card blank. I've got some gold bring that gold together and then our background that we made earlier glue all that together and there's our lovely carnation I'll run that through for the sentiment while I'm doing this together. So, gold first. A, a mill or so smaller than the card blank just for a tiny border and then I think I want it that way let's see yeah I think so And then this has been cut just a mil or so. Well, two mil, so it's got about oh, no, no, one mil border. And that gold and all those browns give that really nice vintagey effect. And then we've just got to decide whether we put, do we pop the flower slap bang in the middle? Do we have it coming off the side of it? I don't know yet. So happy in the holographic. I might cut that again in white. Use the rest of this scrap white from the carnation to get another one. So 
So, what do you think? Should we have it coming off? Flat bang in the middle doesn't feel quite right to me. I don't want to lose too much of it either. About there, do you think? I'm sticking it straight on flat, but feel free to use some foam pads if you want. Okay, I'll trim off in a little while. Just give that a second to grab. happy here. Just going to glue this holographic one on top. Just makes that a bit firmer. Should we go straight through? Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to turn over and just trim off that excess. Okay, so that's trimmed off. And then just, I'm just wondering if I should do something with that. Could have that come in. Seems a shame to waste it, doesn't it? Let's have it come in from there. Gives it a bit of extra. Just need a tiny bit more. It's not quite glued down enough. Oops. And let's have a couple of sequins, shall we? These are kind of pearly kind of ones. Again, I think they go really nice. That creamy pearly colour with a bit of iridescent that matches with the holographic. Let's add a few. There we go. So a bit different looking, a bit vintage -y for a change, uh, but with a modern twist as always. I love that wood in the background, so do try that triptych effect with any of your frame stamps or dies or anything like that. And hopefully there's a few tips there on your pencil colouring as well. So I will be back on Thursday for Thirsty Thursday again uh, as normal at 1pm. Do take care of yourself in the meantime and stay safe. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.